Hi everyone, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to lend selenium in less than 45 minutes. These are the following topics that we're going to discuss. Let's talk about what is selenium and what are the different components of selenium. Selenium is an automation framework which is used for automating web application. Components of Selenium, Selenium IDE, Selenium RC, Selenium WebDriver, and Selenium Grid. Using Selenium IDE, you can record the steps on the web application and you can play and you can play those steps again and again. Selenium RC is an outdated version. Now we have Selenium WebDriver, which is the latest version. Okay. So that means we are not going to use Selenium RC anywhere and we are not going to lend Selenium RC to because it is completely outdated and we have a latest version that is Selenium WebDriver. Selenium WebDriver can be combined with any supported programming language to write the automation code. If you want to write the automation code, you can combine Selenium WebDriver with any programming languages such as Java or C Sharp or Ruby, Python, etc. And then you can write the scripts. It is the advanced version of Selenium RC. The next one is Selenium Grid is used for cross browser testing. If you want to run your uh, Selenium code on different browsers, or if you want to run your Selenium code on uh, different platforms such as Mac OS, uh, Windows, Linux, etc., then you can use Selenium Grid. The next one is features or advantages of Selenium. So first of all, Selenium is a open source tool and it is a free tool. So as it is a open source tool, it is available for free. Anyone can download it without paying any amount and they can start using it. It supports multiple browsers. So you can able to run your Selenium scripts on Chrome browser, Firefox, Opera, Safari, IE. It supports all the browsers. It supports multiple operating systems. You can run your Selenium scripts on Windows or Mac or Linux. So you can install Selenium and you can run your scripts on any platform such as Windows, Mac, Linux. Selenium supports multiple programming languages. So you can code Selenium scripts in Java, Python, Ruby, Perl, JavaScript, HTML. And it also supports various frameworks. You can use Selenium to combine with the data-driven framework or hybrid framework or keyboard-driven framework. Selenium framework can be integrated to various test frameworks. You can integrate the Selenium framework to TestNG or JUnit. And using TestNG or JUnit, you can run your test code, you can able to generate the HTML report. So these are the different advantages of Selenium. Some of the limitations of Selenium. Selenium doesn't support automating mobile applications. It doesn't support automating desktop applications. Using Selenium, you cannot uh, automate desktop applications. It doesn't support automating image-based elements, for example, uh, if you want to read the CAPTCHA code or if you want to read any image, um, any values or any text in the images that Selenium doesn't support. So Selenium locators. So Selenium locators are basically used to identify the elements on the web page. So if you want to identify an element on the web page, you need to use some of the Selenium locators which are mentioned here. One is ID, name, class name, tag name, link text, partial link text, export CSS. So using these locators, you can able to identify the web element. Basically, let's, let's take an example. If you want to identify a person, you will be using uh, his name or his employee ID or his uh, trainer ID or, or any other description or any other attribute uh, to identify that person. Right. So similarly, when it comes to uh, when it comes to web application, if you want to identify any web element, then you have to use some of its attributes, such as ID or name or class name, using which you can able to identify the web element. Types of weights in Selenium: implicit weight, explicit weight, and fluent weight. So let's work on. 
let's work on automating a sample website so let's create a maven project first new maven project if you don't see the maven project here go to other type maven select maven project click on next click on next so make sure you select maven archetype quick start that's a default and the basic click on next and enter group id group id is basically uh, it's kind of a package name you can start with com dot uh, selenium dot yeah com dot selenium and artifact id is nothing but a project name and and click on finish now once you create a maven project you can see the project like this src main java src test java here you can see the maven dependencies and here you can see the palm.xml in the palm.xml we'll be keeping all the dependencies which are required for the project so palm.xml contains all the information about the project it contains the dependencies it contains the project name it contains the artifact id it, it contains everything that is required for your project so by default there will be two packages which will be created which we don't need just delete them In SRC test Java, we'll be keep anything that is related to test code, we can keep it. So uh, to work with the Selenium, we need to add, first of all, Selenium dependencies. And by default, there is a JNIT dependency is added, which we don't need. You can just simply delete it. Let's uh, look for Selenium Maven dependency. Selenium Maven. Click on the first one, mavenrepository.com. So, so try to avoid uh, taking the beta versions always, but you can take alpha versions, 4.0.0. Copy that uh, alpha version and paste it. Paste it under the dependencies section. Yeah, just save it. The moment you save the palm.xml, it will be start downloading all the dependencies which is required for the Selenium. So it will be automatically downloaded. Let's create a package, new package. Let's create a new class, Selenium end to end. Test. Let's create the web driver object. Driver. Home driver. Click on the error bubble to import the web driver. So here I'm initializing with Chrome driver. That is nothing but I'm going to work with the Chrome browser. If you want to work with Firefox browser, you can you have to initialize Gecko driver. If you want to work with Internet Explorer, Internet Explorer driver. For Safari browser, you have to use Safari driver. So it depends on which browser you are going to work with, you need to initialize the corresponding driver. And web driver is an interface which is parent for all these driver classes. And uh, web driver is responsible for controlling the web browser. Using the web driver, you can able to control the web browser, like opening the browser and loading the URL, closing the browser, anything and everything that is related to controlling the web browser, you can handle by using the web driver. Web driver will be having uh, several methods to control the web browsers. Let's use driver dot and one of the important method of web driver is get. 
get is basically used to load the URL. So I'm going to use this um, URL, copy this URL, practicing, and uh, check here. And then if you want to maximize the browser, you can use driver dot manage dot window dot maximize. And if you want to give any uh, weight mechanism, so by default, Selenium does not wait for the element dot manage dot time out to empty city way. So you have to use duration duration dot of seconds of seconds or of days of hours of milliseconds of minutes so generally we'll wait for the element um, in seconds of seconds and give uh, let's say 60 you can give any um, anything between uh, 30 seconds to 60 seconds. That is ideal. There are people who gives 120 seconds, 180 seconds also, but ideal wait time is uh, 60 seconds. Okay, in the very beginning, the script will fail because we haven't set the Chrome driver, okay? So without setting the Chrome driver, if you run your script, it will fail. So let's set the system property. System dot set property. What is the key? This is the key. Copy the key and paste it. Okay. And we need to tell where is the Chrome driver path. Okay. So at this moment, the Chrome driver is not downloaded in our system. We need to download it and we need to give that part. So if you don't know from where you have to download, you can go to this particular URL at the end. This error message will give you the URL. Copy that URL. Paste it here. Okay. You need to download the Chrome driver with respect to the, the current Chrome browser version. So in my case, if you see, Well, about Google Chrome. If you go here, it is 18.9. Okay. Let's download the 18.9 version of the Chrome driver. So I'm using the MacBook, so I must have to use this one. If you're using Windows, you can download the Win32. If you're using Mac, you can use Mac 64 okay. operating system. And you need to copy this part. Paste it. Okay. Now let's run the script. Now you can see that the browser is launched and the URL is also loaded okay so first of all i want to enter some name here enter username i want to enter some value in this text field okay so for that let's inspect the element okay so take this cursor at the you can see here you can take this cursor take this cursor and then move here, click on it. So for this text field, for this text field, you can see the corresponding HTML tag here. So for every web element, you will be having a corresponding HTML tag. In any web page, for any web element, you will be having the corresponding HTML tag. The HTML tag contains set of attributes. So these are called attributes, type, class, placeholders, ID. So these are called attributes, okay? Using any of these attributes, we can able to identify the web element, okay? In Selenium, we have, um, Selenium suggests to use set of identifiers. Those are called Selenium locators. 
using those selenium locators you can able to identify any web element okay some of the selenium locators are id name class name tag name link text partial link text expand css using any of these locators you can able to identify the web element so in this case i can see the locator id id username let's use this id username to find the web element driver dot find element i dot as i mentioned you can use id or name or partial link text so all the locators any of the locators you can use to identify the web element by dot id and every find element the method find element will return you a web element you can say element import web element the web element has set of methods the web element has set of methods to control the web element on the page okay in simple the web element has set of methods to control the element on the web page so however web driver has set of methods to control the web page web element has set of methods to control the element okay so many of the time people often confuse between web driver and web element remember web driver is used to control the web page whereas web element is used to control the element on the web page and find element is always returns a web element object which can be used to control the corresponding element so now i got the element object using that i can it's a text field so on the text field you can do clear and on the text field you can send some keys let's say you can enter say ramesh or whatever it is so that is about working with the text field okay so let's say let's click on submit button okay so remember if you want to work with any web element if you want to work with any web element on the web page so first of all you need to find the web element and then perform the action so there are only two fundamental rules in the selenium find the web element and perform the action so to click on the submit first you need to find the web element again inspect the button has it doesn't have any id or name or any proper locator it has a class but using the class uh, there could be possibility that we can find out uh, you know multiple elements okay. so it is always important to find the element uniquely so let's see if um, class name can work do control f type okay there are 11 buttons are there they're not going to work so let's um, take the export okay if you want to build the export double slash tag name that button you can see there are six buttons on it but what we want to work with we want to work with submit attribute name or text i am going to use a text text to submit you can see one of one so copy this text again so the rule one find the web element find the element by the stem i'm going to find the element by using the export paste the export it's a submit button. so as it is a button you click on it
and uh, again it is a link so if you want to work with the link it's a click you find the web element and click on it let's see how to work with the drop down okay so this drop down has multiple it's a cars okay volvo sav opel rd b and w it has multiple text all these texts are having the car names okay so if you want to work with the drop down first inspect the element so remember in the entire selenia it's all about find the web element and perform the action okay whether it is a image whether it is a button radio button check box link or whatever it is so first of all you need to find the element without finding without finding the element you cannot do any action firstly you need to find the element. so this uh, element has a name cars let's find the Driver dot. If you want to find the element, driver dot find element by dot name. What is the value of the name? Cars up here. So you want to let's say. Let's say I want to select uh, R. I want to select R. So let's see: Is there any method in the web element to select an item? Okay, I'm using this uh, web element object that is drop down dot uh, drop down element dot. Let's see: Is there any any method to select R to select an item? So we have clear to clear the text. Click. Find element, get attribute, get CSS, get location. Is selected, is enabled, is displayed. But we don't have any, we don't have any method to select an item. Okay, so that is the reason in Selenium working with drop down is a different concept. Okay, so here what we need to do is we need to create an object for select class. Select. selecting no select. so here here in the constructor of select we need to pass the web element we need to pass the web element in many times i saw many people instead of passing the web element they pass the driver object they pass the driver object instead of passing the web element object they pass the driver object it is very very big mistake we are going to work on the element not on the browser you want to work on the element you need to use the element object select select car equal to new select select car is an object the class select again has multiple methods to work with the drop down select let's say i want to select so what i want to select i want to select rd select by there are three ways to select an item there are three ways to select an item one is select by index select by value select by visible text okay so by index is a integer so if you want to select rd starting from zero volvo is zero zero one two three you need to pass the index three to select rd Select by index three. We select R D. Select by visible text. Visible text is something what you see. Okay, so here you are seeing R D. Okay, type R D. Make sure the capital and small letter are matching. Next one is select by visible. Next one. Select by value. So if you want to know the value of R D, you need to inspect this item. You need to inspect this element and see the R D. 
So RD is the text here. So this is the text. The text is always between the start tag and end tag. Okay. So the value of RD is RD car. Take that RD car. You can use any of this approach to work with a drop down. Okay. So let's work with um, multi select box. So this is a single select, this is a multi select. Okay, let's work with multi select. Multi select. Again, it is a select. Okay. So we have to use the select. So first of all, to work with to work with any web element, first we need to find the web element. Let's inspect this web element. This is a select. It has a name, state. Okay. Driver dot find element i dot name. Element create an object for select class. Select. Okay, we need to pass the web element. We need to pass the web element, not web driver. Remember, we need to pass web element. So again, you can choose by index, by value, or by visible text. Okay, so whatever. Let's go by visible text. So let me choose three states. Okay, it is a multi-select. We can select any number of values. Okay. So let me select uh, California. And uh, there are a few other methods in the select class. Get all selector means only selected options it will give. Get options means it will give all the options. Get first selected option means it will give only the uh, first selected option. So in, in our case, it is California. It will return in the form of web element. You can say get text to get the text of that web element. And you can print that. So that's how you select multi select. So the next one is alert exam. So there are many times people often confuse with uh, alert and uh, pop up. Okay. So I'll tell you the difference between alert and pop up, which is very important for you to understand the Selenium alerts. When you click on any button, sometimes it will open some window. Some window. Okay. So you might confuse whether it is a alert or it is a pop-up. I'll tell you a simple technique to find out whether it is a alert or pop-up. If it is a alert, if it is a alert, you cannot access the web page. Once the alert is opened, you cannot access the background web page. Okay, you cannot click on any of the button. You can see you cannot move your page. You cannot move up or down, you cannot click on the button, you cannot access your web page. If you cannot access your web page, then you can consider that as a alert. If it is a pop-up, you can able to access your web page. If it is a alert, if it is a alert, you cannot access your web page. So that is a simple technique to know whether it is a alert or pop-up. So if you want to, you know, again access the web page, you must have to, you must have to handle this alert by clicking on cancel or by clicking on OK. So somehow you need to handle this alert. Okay. So how to handle the alerts is what we are going to discuss. Okay. So let's inspect this element. So once you click on this element, the alert will open. Then we will handle that alert. Okay. So this element doesn't have any id or name it has a text form talent again we have to 
take the example. Whenever you are going to find out an element by using the text, then you can choose this way. Double slash, tag name, text of equal to the text name. Alert, it's a button. Button dot click. The moment you click on this button, the moment you click on this button, the alert will open. So if you want to handle the alert, driver dot switch to dot alert. This will return a alert object. import this alert, alert dot. So the class alert will have a set of methods. One is accept to accept the alert, dismiss to dismiss the alert. Accept is nothing but okay, dismiss is nothing but cancel, okay? So let's accept the alert. If you want to dismiss, you can use, and you can also get the text of the alert, alert dot get text the title of the alert or the text of the alert. You can print that uh, text. And um, this particular alert is also having a text field, okay? Here you can enter something, please enter your name, okay? So, uh, Send keys, some name, something you can enter. The next one is Windows example. Okay. So this is very, very important. So in the interviews, they will be asking you, how do you handle multiple windows? So the moment I click on the new window, see this example, the moment I click on the new window, it is opening a, a different window. So let's do a simple example. Let's do a simple example. So I'll click on this new window. The moment I click on the new window, a new window is opening. Okay, all I have to do is switch to this new window and uh, close this new window, that is second window and come back to the first window. So again, inspect this new window. Again, it doesn't have any uh, ID or uh, name or anything. Let's go with the Xbox. You always have to see one on one. You need to find out the element uniquely. Multiple windows. I will find element. The moment I click on this new window button, it opens a new window, okay? It opens a new window. Remember every window will be having a, a unique ID. Every window will be having a unique ID, okay? Using this unique ID, you can able to switch from one window to other window. The moment I click on the new window, it opens a new window ID. Consider this as a first window and this as a second window, okay? So now, from the first window, how do I switch to the second window and then close that window? So this is what our question is like. So first of all, let me get the current window ID. Driver dot, get window. Get window handle will always gives you the current window ID. You can say current window ID or first window ID. If you want to see how it will print, you can print the window. Okay. So now I am in first window and uh, I know what is the first window ID. So how do I get the second window ID? So there is another method called get window handle. 
the method get window handles returns set of set of window ids okay so this is a set this is a set how many windows are opened after clicking on the new button there are two windows are open okay you can say this is window 1 or this is window 2 and sometimes the order is not guaranteed not sometimes okay always the order is not guaranteed so you might see second window in the first place or first window in the second place because the order is the set means the order is not guaranteed and this set object is window handles i know first window id i know first window id i only need to know second window id okay so how can i do this in simple what i can do is window handles dot remove i know the first window id right remove the first window id from the set from this set remove the first window id so if i remove the first window id from this set there is only one window id which is left in the set okay and get that window id dot iterator dot next so this will be the second So this is my approach, right? So all I need to do is driver dot switch to the window. I want to switch to the second window, okay? And now I am in the second window, okay? I am in the second window. I can in the second window I can enter some text here. I can you know click on this Google search. I can do whatever I want, okay? So now I am in the now I am in the second window. so simply i want to close the second window drive dot close the moment i say drive dot close the window the current window will be closed the current window at this moment is second window that will be closed so once i close the second window i can again switch to window i can switch back to the first window so like this. please remember selenium does not switch to the first window itself okay you think that okay second window is closed now it will be automatically switched to the first window it is not correct you have to explicitly switch to any window that you want to switch so this is about multiple windows now let's work on the frames handling let's look at this element the set element the set element we can see that it is belongs to a frame okay and the frame id is fa so if you don't switch to the frame and if you try to identify the element directly it will throws no such element exception if any element which is inside a frame then you must have to switch to that frame first of all and then find the elements inside that frame so for example as i mentioned let's assume that there is a element here and you need to find out this element so if you want to find out this element first you need to switch to the frame let's say this is a frame you need to switch to the frame so once you switch to the frame then you can able to identify all the elements which are inside that frame it can be one element it can be multiple elements okay and once you done with this elements and once you done with the frame you should you should come out of this frame and first of all what are the different ways of switching to the frame you can switch to the frame by using index you can switch to the frame by using name or id you can switch to the frame by using web element frame itself frame itself is a web element and you can find out that frame as a web element and you can switch to the frame driver dot switch to the frame you can see that here 
So you can switch to the frame by using index or name or ID or frame element. Okay. You can use index only if there is one frame is available. So in the entire application, if there is only one frame, then you can use index. Okay. So index starts from zero. If there are more number of frames, it is advisable to go with either frame name or frame ID. If the frame doesn't have name or ID, then you can switch to the frame by using web element. Okay. Yeah, so in this example, I'm going to switch to the frame by using frame element. Okay. So as I said, you can switch to the frame using index or name or ID or frame element. Okay. So I'm going to switch to the frame by using frame element. I want to find element i dot i id of the frame is fa and once you switch to the frame you can enter some text here in the search field so before you enter some text in the search field you need to find that element Okay, then ID of that element is search. I will dot find element. You will get the web element. Make it as search element. And do some same things. Let's say selenium. Once you're done with the frame, you must have to always remember once you're done with the frame, you must have to come out of the frame driver dot switch to dot default content default content is used to come out of the frame okay. let's work on the actions class in selenium so if you want to perform mouse related actions or keyboard related actions in selenium you need to use actions class for example if you want to perform right click or if you want to do double click or if you want to move the cursor from one location to other location, anything related to mouse or keyboard related actions, which you can achieve using actions class in Selenium. So let's say, how do we perform a right click on a button? So here I want to perform right click, okay? So if you want to perform any action, first of all, you need to find that element, inspect. This element uh, doesn't have any ID or name. Let's go with the export. So double slash. Tag name is button. And text is submit. Copy the text box. Driver dot find element I dot export. Now on this element, I want to perform right click. Let's create an object for the actions class. You need to pass the driver object here to the actions class constructor action dot you can do context click and pass the web element and action dot build and perform if you don't do build and perform selenium doesn't do the context click it doesn't perform any action on the given button you must have to do build and perform. Let's run this code. Yeah, you can see that in the frame it has entered the um, selenium. You can see that it has selected RE and there are multiple states are selected. You can see that the value Ramesh is entered and we can see the entered value is Ramesh. Okay, so like this. That's all, friends.